Get up, get ready, grab some popcorn or coffee, depending on what time of the day you're watching this, because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Facelin. We have a great show for you today. The rotation has the five Fortnite skins that need edit styles. We're looking at how the Zero Crisis event changed Fortnite's lore and point of interest. And of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. But here's something interesting. Brie Larson is taking over the Fortnite shop. That's right, Captain Marvel herself has her own locker. Included in it is a new edition of the Bush Ranger inspired by Miss Larson's squad, the Bush Babies, honey hitters for having the harvesting tool, and the free mix and glitter emotes, which is what I am most excited for personally. So if you want to join Brie Larson's Fortnite squad, this is your first step. But up next, we're running down five Fortnite skins that need edit styles in the rotation. Being a free game, Fortnite's main source of revenue is its cosmetics roster. Over the years, the game has made billions just from skins, selling them via the item shop, battle passes, and even separate bundles. A trend we've seen time and time again is popular skins receiving remakes with similar features but with different outfits or hairstyles. Some skins get edit styles, where you only need one skin that has several variations. However, others are released as separate skins or never even get built-in variations. Today, we'll be taking you through the top 5 Fortnite skins that should have edit styles. At number 5, we have the Atlantean Fish Stick, based on the Atlantean theme of Coral Castle. This skin has no edit styles or built-in emotes. Fish Stick is such an iconic Fortnite character, and making separate skins for him sounds like a good idea to sell more cosmetics. Except, Fish Stick already has a bunch of variants and most players looking to get a skin would pick the original one with its four edit styles. It would have made sense to release two Fish Sticks, each with two or three styles, but creating an Atlantean Fish Stick as its own skin was a blunder on Epic's part. The skin is never seen in public lobbies, whereas Fish Sticks and his styles are always used by players memeing around the island. Number four on our list is Drift. Drift went on to receive a separate Summer Drift skin in the item shop later in Chapter 1, and honestly, it should have been an edit style for the original skin. Moreover, the female version of Drift that was later released in Season X got two great edit styles that would work very well with Drift's original outfit. Redditors have created some great concept art for the same, and I'm sure most Drift users will be happy if we actually got these edit styles in Fortnite. At number 3, we have the Bright Bomber. This is one of the most iconic Fortnite skins, and Epic has remade it a couple of times by now. Among variations released as separate skins, first we have Beach Bomber, similar to Summer Drift. Then we have Dark Bomber, a dark or cube variant of Bright Bomber. We also have Brilliant Bomber, and frankly, I don't know what to call it. And finally, we have Bubble Bomber, if you like Harley Quinn but don't want to buy Harley Quinn. Number two on our list is the Cuddle Team Leader and every skin that was recreated from it. We have a bunch of bears in the game, each costing either 1500 or 2000 V-Bucks. Most of these skins were released during the first two years of Fortnite when edit styles were uncommon. It's pretty strange to see that they haven't been combined. No one uses them in 2021, and the edit styles are pretty much just recolors that would sell much better if they were made into one skin with selectable styles. At number one, we have Oblivion from Season 4. This skin was released three years ago, and a lot of people are still asking for edit styles. Of course, requesting an Oblivion edit style always starts up an endless debate on Reddit. To give you some context, Season 4's Tier 100 skin was a supervillain called Omega, and Oblivion is his female counterpart. Omega was pretty hard to obtain, as acquiring his full outfit with edit styles required you to get Tier 100 and Season Level 80. This was an incredibly difficult grind that only a few players managed to complete. On the other hand, Oblivion, the female supervillain, was a simple legendary skin in the item shop that you could acquire for V-Bucks. Here are some concept edit styles from Reddit. Being a 2000 V-Bucks skin, Oblivion having no edit styles has left a lot of players discontented. When Epic finally did give her an edit style, it was an all-gold Oblivion that you never see in an actual match. 
I guess Oblivion users will just have to wait for a while. We'll have to see if Epic will even consider adding color variations to her lights. This week on Playing With Pooks, we're going to focus on crossbows. I'm usually a sniper, but they've all been removed this season. Thanks, no thanks, Epic. So we're going to mess around with crossbows and try to figure these things out together, collectively, as a group. So let's see how it goes. We have six bows in the game currently right now. We've got mechanical and primal bows. Wish me some luck here. Hopefully we don't just get eliminated off spawn and get sent back to the lobby. Um, I've got my trusty friend NG actually helping me right now. Looks like there might be a team dropping here. I'm landing at this main building here. Great, bandages, nailed it. Mechanical parts can be found primarily from vehicles, um, so that's anything basically with a motor. So you have RVs, um, trucks, cars, Mack trucks, anything like that. These are pretty easy to find. When Epic first released this season, mechanical parts were pretty hard to find. Um, so anything that you can find, oh, we have a bow here, we have a makeshift bow, perfect. So what I'm going to do is actually just use this. Um, Oh, we've got company. Never mind. Let's take care of that first. Okay, help me, teammate. Nailed it. Perfect. All right, he also had a makeshift bow. He also had two bones that I just picked up. Katniss Everdeen has entered the chat. Fifty-two white on that guy. Six on that guy down. What I'm going to do is see if I can't just upgrade this actually. Um, so you can see that I have I can make the primal bow, so that's what I'll do. I'll, I have the makeshift bow. So I can make the primal bow or the mechanical bow. I'm gonna opt for the mechan or the primal bow rather, um, because I have the bones for it. So I'll craft that, and then all we have to do actually is find a frog um, or a sinkfish. Got him. No, oh, the loot goblin strikes again. To the frogs! I'm gonna craft this stink bow if it kills me. I'm scared! Frog? I heard him. Where the heck is he? Oh my gosh, I found one. Ha! Stink sack, let's go. All right, so now you can see a little icon appeared above my bow. I can craft a primal stink bow. Craft. Did it. All right, so, got that. No! I'm gonna I'm craft gonna this stink bow, bow if it, it kills, kills me. me. You guys kind of saw it in action. Let's craft this very quickly because people are after us. Mechanical bow, craft. Now you can see that there's a little bit of a radius on these, so they, they drop. They drop um, grenades when you fire them that end up doing uh, a little bit of damage per per hit as well. Uh, this is the recycler. fighting so contrary to what I said before this bow is actually uh, broke shield on that guy oh 
Oh, no. Why am I dancing? Ah! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> dead. Leave me. <laughs> I had a bit of a rough go, but at least we got to see three of the bows uh, that game or that this this session. You know, we had the, the stink bow, uh, the explosive bow, and the shockwave bow, although we didn't get to use it. We saw it kind of in play. So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of an idea of how strong the bows are. The thing that I like about the crafting is you can essentially go for weapons that suit your playstyle. Sure, it might take a little bit of time at the beginning of the match to kind of gather all of your resources, gather your materials, and unfortunately if you don't find a makeshift bow then you're kind of uh, out of luck there. But uh, in terms of really catering to your playstyle, choose the bow that you like and uh and go from there so hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment hopefully you learned something i will see you next time I'm playing with pooks Sneak attack him. Oh, this gets fucked.
Honestly, Hot Drops is constantly giving me all of these great, brilliant ideas that I want to try out in game, but before I can go try them out, we have a few things that we might want to avoid accomplishing in low ground. First up, Sprillet wants everyone to check out this sick play. I have to be honest, I think that's happened to all of us at one point or another, but if you noticed, in the bottom left hand corner of the screen there was a little quest completed icon that popped up right as he eliminated himself that said land at every landmark. I have to be honest, I think he took that way too seriously. Uh, but moving on, I'm not sure that Conrad's is doing this right. Working as intended? Yeah, we'll give you this one, close enough, I guess. Moving on, Waste Independence One finds another use for the new off-road tires. I love how one little addition to the game can create so many new interactions. It's definitely something that I'm never going to tire of. But next up, Uncle Butt gives us a rule that applies to all competition. Do not celebrate too early. Not good. There have got to be a million times I've seen someone celebrate only to lose a second later. Don't do that. The karma Fortnite gods will get you. Also, Uncle Butt, change your username. Come on. Finally, I only drop risky reels shows us that reality waves can change anything in the blink of an eye. Instability will only get worse from here. Watch out for reality waves. Copy. We'll keep watch. Reality waves can change anything in the blink. I'm a butterfly. That was a big one. Everything all right down there? I'm a butterfly now, so... I have to say, I think a change like that would probably break the internet. But up next, we're looking at how the Zero Crisis event changed Fortnite's lore in Point of Interest. Fortnite's newest live event, called the Zero Crisis Finale, marked the beginning of the second half of Fortnite Chapter 2. Along with being the biggest story update we've received this chapter, the Zero Crisis Finale also made some significant changes to our understanding of previous events in the story. Fortnite has a fragmented way of narrating its story. It is explained without players understanding everything that's going on. It has always been up to the community to get together and assemble the various pieces of the puzzle to create a cohesive plotline. Today, we'll be taking you through how the Zero Crisis finale event has changed a lot of the details we thought we knew about the world of Fortnite. Let's start with how meteors in the Fortnite universe work. Remember back in season 4 when the meteor came crashing on the island and brought with it an extraterrestrial called the Visitor? The live event of that season was a rocket launch where we all assumed that the Visitor wanted to escape our island after having accidentally landed on it. That theory was blown apart by the Zero Crisis finale. After going rogue, Agent Jonesy was able to summon one of the seven simply by chucking a rift to go into the zero point. This means that the meteors don't just carry members of the Seven within them. They are a legitimate mode of transportation. This also means that the Seven are somehow inherently connected to the Zero Point and can be contacted through it. However, the role of the Seven is quite unclear and leaves several questions unanswered. Was the Visitor somehow summoned on our island by one of its residents? Do meteors let you travel to planets without letting you use them to escape? Speaking of the Seven, we now know that the scientist is not the leader of the group. 
Since he was much bigger than the visitor and paradigm, and considering his involvement in the live event that changed the Fortnite map, we all assumed that the scientist was the leader of the seven. The Zero Crisis event revealed a new character, the Foundation, who is apparently the leader of the group. Speaking of the seven, we come to the mention of multiple new characters during the Zero Crisis event. Agent Jonesy wants the Foundation to help him stabilize the Zero Point in order to prevent a reality collapse. In exchange, Jonesy promises to get him to Geno and the sisters. A lot of people are speculating that these characters are the remaining three members of the Seven, who might have been captured by the Io. However, the conversation mentions Geno and the sisters separately. It is unlikely that the Foundation would specifically ask about the sisters if all of them were grouped together in a prison somewhere, which means that Geno and the sisters are possibly antagonists in the storyline and might be linked to the Io itself. We also found out a few new details about the Io. Agent Jonesy has gone rogue and isn't assisting them any longer, but the island now has NPCs such as the Spire Assassin that are linked to the Io. This means that the Io has maintained its presence on the island without help from Jonesy. This is an important detail because it means that the Io might already have sent someone to our world after Jonesy's resignation. The next detail is regarding the Zero Point. We've always known that the Zero Point is a portal of some sort that can control and connect realities. The Zero Crisis finale event gave us more details regarding the nature of this magical orb. The Zero Point is not just a portal connecting us to one other dimension. At the beginning of Season 5, we saw Agent Jonesy dive into the Zero Point and enter our world almost immediately. It was believed that the Zero Point is merely a portal between his world and ours. At the same time, we also knew that the Zero Point can change realities. For example, when it was unstable back in Season X and later again in Chapter 2 Season 5, it changed the island in several ways. The Zero Crisis finale demonstrated how the Zero Point is comprised of a number of reality threads. These threads connect various points in space and make up the reality as we know it. When in an unstable state, the Zero Point releases reality waves that change how people and places look. The Zero Crisis finale also confirmed our understanding of the loop. We've always theorized that the loop is nothing but the Battle Royale mode, and Agent Jonesy confirmed this when he said that he was now stuck inside the loop. I gotta say, the more the lore of Fortnite unfolds, the more I just want Epic to release more of it, if that makes sense. Can we get a Fortnite movie at some point down the line? It would definitely be a blockbuster hit. That about does it for me. But for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, here's your victory royale with cheese.